A warm good morning to you from the Zero Project Conference 2022. Uh, we are broadcasting live here from the UN uh, in Vienna, and this morning I have the pleasure uh, to talk to Lea Gies from Q8 in Hamburg Altona. Good morning, Lea. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do this in English, uh, but we are broadcasting in this, uh, in this language. Uh, please, a brief introduction of yourself and the organization you work for. Yes, I'm Lea Gies and I work for the Alsterdorf Foundation and um, they, they are um, providing several services for people with disabilities and I especially work for the initiative Q8, as you already mentioned, and we do um, kind of inclusion, inclusive um, neighborhood development. So we um, yeah, try to increase the participation in um, neighborhoods and also really try to to um, yeah, develop the neighborhood, especially with those people who um, need um, yeah, the development of the of the uh, helping structures, for example, people with disabilities, but also elderly people or yeah, all kinds of people who maybe are not that loud and stand in the first row when they need something, but also yeah, a bit quiet and we try to reach them as well and um, to participate them in the development um, processes. Thank you, Lea. We know each other for quite some years, uh, but please tell the audience when and how did the project start? Yes, the project um, I'm talking about today started in 2012 and um, at that time here, um, not that far away from here in Hamburg, there was a big um, railway station that was um, yeah, empty and um, the city of Hamburg decided to, um, yeah, to, to invent their new, or uh, develop their new um, neighborhood with uh, 1,600 apartments. And um, my colleague back then in 2012, Karen, she asked the questions if inclusion can be part of the development process and the planning so that urban development can be put together with inclusion, which was um, quite a new idea at that time. I would um, imagine, uh, how, how did you get uh, the public and also the, the above all the political support for a quite revolutionary idea by that time? Yeah, I think that was not that easy in the beginning, but um, we were quite lucky because she had um, good connections to the um, to some of the politicians here in the district, so she could um, yeah talk to them, and they were quite fast in supporting this idea. And also, what was really nice was that from the uh, city of Hamburg, um, the municipality. Some people were very interested in that topic, and especially the the ones who planned um, the whole urban development project in Mitte Altona. And they um, were open to to be part of this process and um, to learn what can be, um, yeah, what are the 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 topics and the the points of inclusion development. So we all started to um, to go to in, into this yeah process without knowing what comes out at the um, at the end but um, everyone was open to get into it so that was really good wonderful so you will celebrate 10 years basically in the, in this year uh, how does the inclusive living look like today please give us some examples yes um, there are Quite a lot of people, well, now in Mitte Altona, everyone uh, moved in. So um, there are about 2,500 people living in the neighborhood now. And it's quite diverse. So um, there are people, there are especially uh, different um, uh, building societies who build their, their apartments together and they had special um, yeah, topics or um, things that um, uh, <laughs> uh, con uh, concepts for so that they could build. And for example, they're living 
um, blind and visually impaired people, but also elderly people who are from Germany and um, from Turkey. And also there are a few um, apartments for people who are, um, yeah, who, ref who are refugees. And so it's quite a mixed up neighborhood um, now. And um, also on the other side of the street, a new uh, other um, urban development project uh, was uh, developed. And um, here we could also take the um, yeah, the um, what we learned from from the first project we could put on the next one, and um, there we even have further uh, inclusive inclusive um, yeah points. So, for example, there are all flats will be uh, built barrier free. There will be even more um, apartments for people who are really in need of. Um, housing, for example, um, also um, disabled people, but also the mentally ill people, people who were um, um, uh, younger people, elderly people, people who didn't have um, a flat at all. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to increase the inclusiveness more and more in every step we go further. Leah, how, how is it managed? Are there regular meetings? Are there gatherings? Uh, what uh, what do you do? Yes, I um, uh, manage the meetings. I um, there are like two to three meetings a year, where which are bigger meetings um, where yeah many people come together, and um, especially also the people from the municipality and the politics, so that we can all talk together. Everyone is seen as an expert in those meetings. For example, as like the people who live there are experts for their neighborhood. The people who are uh, who have a disability are experts for their disability, and so we talk for about uh, certain topics um, all together as experts. And um, in between those big meetings, there are in between meetings. Uh, what are they, what they are called and there we we go further into the special topics or um, yeah because for me it's very important to really work with the people who who will live there or who um, yeah who not in the municipality but uh, from bottom up so we I invent with them the topics and take on the next meetings what they want to talk about. And Leia, the the people who, who live there, are they they come to stay, or is there is there a turnover, or how how does this look like? Um, yeah, it's different. At the beginning, there was nobody um, who who knew that they would live there. So in the beginning, there were a lot of people who were really interested in the in that um, in that topic of inclusion and urban development, but also. Um, social uh, institutions or universities, people from the church, for example, or yeah, so a lot of different people. And as as sooner or as, as long as the, there were more people that knew that they would live in that um, neighborhood, yeah, the more the people changed and they, um, the more people who, who yeah, lived there took, um, took place in the meetings as well. Leah, do you intend to grow? Do you intend to replicate it uh, in the in the in the city in other parts of Hamburg or somewhere else? Yes, as I mentioned on the other side uh, in the new development project, but also on other and at other um, parts in Hamburg, we um, try to not really replicate because we think it's always important to find um, a special conclusion for uh, yeah for for the people who live there and for the for the situation that is at the at that very place so it can be a bit different but we try to um, yeah or we, we we follow up with our work at different places in Hamburg yes uh, and Leah, do you also do consulting work? So, for example, if somebody from uh, from uh, Munich or from uh, from other cities would come, uh, do you do consulting work and uh, and support? 
Yes, we um, we do that a lot. Like we have a lot of visitors who um, want to see the neighborhood, and um, we show them around, and we we show them what yeah what our work is about and what we what we learned from from this process. Yes, and everybody who wants to um, to come is welcome. It's very nice. How, how big is your organization? How many people work with you? Well, I'm uh, here in Altona. I'm alone. <laughs> I have a student who uh, works with me, but yeah, it's like in each in each, in each neighborhood we're alone. But we have seven neighborhoods at the moment, so I have seven colleagues at different neighborhoods. And out of the 2,500 people you mentioned, uh, how many persons with disabilities do live in the in the compound? Um, oh, that's hard to say. In the new um, um, neighborhood, I know that there will be 7.5% of the whole apartments only for inclusive um, people, like uh, the people I mentioned. In Mitte Altona, I would say maybe 60, I guess. I, it's, but it's, yeah, it's hard to say because uh, we had, we didn't, don't have a list. All right. <laughs> uh, how do you choose, or uh, people come to you and say, uh, I want to live here, or do you work with, uh, with other charitable organizations uh, or, or disability organizations? How, how does this work? Yeah, we only um, are moderating the whole process, so we don't develop it ourselves. It's, it's um, different companies that develop the apartments or the houses or also the, um, uh, the care structures, and then w if people call us and say, hey, we need um, an apartment, we um, transfer them to the organizations that are at the neighborhood and um, yeah, so they can talk with it, with them. Lea, we're at, uh, hopefully at the end of the pandemic. I mean, how, how did people cope and how did your, your project cope with, uh, with the pandemic? Well, in the beginning it was really hard because, uh, yeah, no one knew <laughs> what to do and then but also there are a lot of people helped each other and um, with the online uh, meetings, we, yeah, we kept on um, being in contact with each other. We lost a few people, but now that we can meet again in person, the people come also back. And um, what is really nice is that we go out of this um, neighborhood now because the, the planning process is finished, but the people really take over the process and want to do it themselves, and this is um, yeah, very nice. I'm very glad about that. What are your wishes and, and projects for the future? Well, I hope that uh, inclusion will be um, yeah, really part of, of all inclusive, uh, in all city development projects, and not just as a topic on top, which everyone has to do, but that the people really get into into thinking about it and also really take um, together the like take in the process the people who really know about it there are a lot of people who um, are really experts about certain things and I think they need to be involved in the processes so that the um, yeah that there's a good uh, yeah that everything is good at the end. <laughs> Leah, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Good luck. And uh, of course, thank the you. audience can contact uh, Leah Gysi if they are interested in inclusive neighborhoods. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We are broadcasting live here from the Zero Project Conference 2022. Please stay tuned and stay with us. Thank you. Thank you very much.